Hello. Welcome back to the Space School Log, otherwise known as PPSW, your favorite handle place. Today, you're back with another Star Wars story. Today, we're going to take a look into the possible master and student relationship between Grand Master of the Jedi Order and the Jedi's Chosen One. Would Yoda be able to teach Anakin Skywalker what he needed to learn, or would he be the downfall of young Skywalker? Before we begin this video, let's smash that like button, try and shoot for 2,000 likes in the first 24 hours, and I will release What If Qui Gon Jinn Visited. Darth Vader. This video you definitely don't want to miss. We're also going to 50,000 subscribers, so join Space Cologne and be part of our incredible journey here together. If you have this video of videos, link down below. I read all the comments, but I don't do crossovers. And one last thing, if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon, Twitch, and Community Discord. Special shout out to George Story, Benjamin Wells, Gort, and Chancellor Lauren Sanders for being grand tier supporters, and Jay Hoffman, Icy Raptor, and Warpig and Throw 8 as massive of the tier supporters on our Patreon. Thank you all, you are guys, uh, helping fund massive, massive projects in the near future. And if you want to win a free sideshow collectible, watch to the end of the video, and I will tell you how. Our story begins inside of the Jedi Council chambers. The Jedi Council was being introduced to a child who was supposed to be the Jedi's chosen one. Anakin Skywalker was a slave from the planet of Tatooine. Anakin was nine. For someone to become a Jedi, he was a bit too old. The Council all felt the same way about this. Everyone in the High Council felt that Anakin was too old and too corrupt to be trained as a Jedi. It was against the Code, and the Code forbade a child of his age to be trained by the Order. As the sun set across the city dropped behind the silhouettes of the city, the Jedi Council looked at young Skywalker as he stood before all the members quietly. The Master of the Order, Mace Windu, held a little device that popped up little images, of which the child was supposed to tell Mace what he could see. The Force was very powerful with Skywalker, and everyone in the room could feel it. As they had Anakin give his answers, each and every single one of them would be correct. As Windu put down the device, he looked at the boy. The Grand Master, who was seated to his right, thought deeply as his small green hand rested on his own chin. He could feel everything Anakin felt. The trauma, the pain, the suffering, the coldness, and at the very end of it, separation. Yoda knew the answers, but then decided to ask. How feel you? Anakin looked at the little green life form sitting at the helm of the council. Anakin thought for a moment as he deciphered the riddle that Yoda spoke in. Anakin had never seen one of Yoda's species before. There were hundreds of people and species that passed through Mos Espa, and yet he'd never seen one of Yoda's kind. From Rodians to Twi'leks, Zabrax, and even Malastarians like Saboba, none of these species were at all like Yoda, or the other Jedi who was sitting across the corner of the room named Yaddle. Anakin then moved back to Yoda and answered the question saying, Cold, sir. Yoda couldn't just feel the pain that Anakin had in his past, but he could hear it in the weakened voice of the child. Yoda also knew of this coldness. He felt it in his apprentice, Dooku, before, and the cold was often attributed to feelings of the dark side. Like the shadow that was beginning to rise within the galaxy, Yoda then asked Anakin, Afraid, are you? The question echoed through the tiny hall of the council chambers, as all of the members kept their eyes peeled on Anakin Skywalker, as the boy said, No, sir. Yoda knew the child was lying, and while he wasn't going to embarrass Anakin, he wanted him to know that the council could see through his words the pain in his voice, and the memories he dragged behind him like a ball and chain. As the Master Jedi to Yoda's right spoke up, Kedimundi spoke delicately. Your thoughts dwell on your mother. Yoda rubbed his chin as Anakin looked at Kiarimundi. Yoda spoke up again, asking, Afraid to lose you are, hmm? Anakin's curiosity peaked as he got a little defensive of his own emotions. What does that have to do with anything? Yoda then said, Everything. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. The council all listened in closely. Mace raised his hand to his face and thought momentarily. The entire council was motionless, the echoes still ringing from the final word that Yoda had said. Suffering. It wound itself into Anakin's ears as his memories of what Wado did to him trickled into his mind's eye. Yoda rubbed his chin again. He thought, as the Master of the Order spoke up, Your attachments could be your undoing. And Mace, to an extent, was right. They could limit him as a Jedi, and they could prohibit him from being an acceptable member of the Jedi Order. Yaddle from the other side of the room spoke up, saying that Anakin's emotions could be what makes him truly special. 
Of course he was special, he was the chosen one, but the council needed to open their eyes to see that, if they didn't, it could doom them. Opo Rancis from across the other side of the room cleared his throat, saying that it hadn't been anybody in the history of the Order that had been trained at Anakin's age. Anakin just stood in the middle as the council continued talking around him like he was just a ghost. Anakin was taken aback to the place that he was before, where he was a shadow on the streets and a ghost in the minds of every passerby. The slave to Watto and the boy who got nothing in the shape of respect from anyone other than his own mother. Yoda interrupted the council and pondered for a moment. A part of the order you will become. Take you as my apprentice. I will. Anakin perked up as the air from the council chambers was sucked out. No one had a word to say as their heads all tilted towards the Grand Master. Yoda's last apprentice was meant to be Dooku, and that apprenticeship ended decades beforehand. The Master of the Order during that time wasn't even Windu, let alone the fact that Windu wasn't a Jedi Master at that point. Mace was the most shocked of the group. He was very strong against Anakin being allowed into the Order, and he was surprised that Yoda would be willing to just train the boy. Yoda sat quietly, waiting for any Jedi to interject. If anyone had an issue, Yoda would have no issue with discussing it with them. Yoda looked left, and then he looked right, as he motioned himself forward. Yoda stood up from his seat slowly. Anakin looked down at Master Yoda, who was still much shorter than him. Come with me, young Skywalker. Anakin did so as Kiarimundi spoke up. What's about the invasion of Naboo? Yoda turned around as Anakin walked beside Yoda. The Grand Master told Kiarimundi, Go you well with Master Galia, Qui-Gon, and Kenobi to Naboo. Go swiftly, you will. Find this assassin. You must. Kiari nodded and stood up with Ali Galia and moved over to follow the Grand Master out of the room. Yoda took Anakin down into the body of the temple and talked with the boy. Of course, he had the introduction from Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, but that was not Anakin. Yoda wanted to hear what Anakin had to say about his life and everything that had happened in it. Yoda had lived for over 800 years. He'd seen every kind of Jedi, and being the Grand Master for more than a century or even two meant that he needed to be there for Anakin. Sure, it wasn't normal or even accepted to have a Jedi to be accepted into the Order at that age of nine, but Yoda couldn't throw Anakin away. Sure, he was skeptical and the future surrounding Skywalker wasn't clear, but if they pushed Anakin away, the possibility of what he could become could destroy the Order itself. Yoda walked with Anakin and got to know the young boy more and more. At the same time, Kiarimundi, Ali Galia, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon Jinn were moving back to one of the landing platforms on Coruscant so that they could go back to Naboo. Inside of the Jedi Temple, Yoda and Anakin walked their way out to the garden. Yoda listened to everything young Skywalker had to say regarding his life experiences. Yoda knew that the training of Skywalker would be a challenge but he never realized that it would be this difficult. Anakin had a lot of baggage, and it was a lot that he was struggling with, and a lot of that because of being a slave. The rest had to do with being separated from his mother at the rightful age of nine. He was an entire galaxy away from his mother, and the dark side was surrounding Anakin. Yoda knew this, and he knew that Anakin would have to work his hardest to break free of the chains of his emotions. Yoda at this point also didn't know if having Anakin free from his emotions was for better or worse. But at this particular moment, he wanted to focus on Anakin ridding himself of those feelings. Yoda stood before Anakin as they looked at the Tree of Life. Anakin stood silently, waiting for Master Yoda to speak up, as the Grand Master looked at the tree and then moved his eyes back over to Skywalker. Yoda smiled and then spoke up. The Force around you. Feel it, do you? Kinda. Focus. Strong you are, but unstable too. Trust in the Force. Let it guide you, hmm? Anakin looked around and then closed his eyes, focusing on the Force, allowing it to passage into his heart and to his soul. Yoda could feel what Anakin was feeling. The boy moved from the middle to the light before plunging down into the darkness. Yoda could feel what terror lived within Skywalker. If the boy was to become a Jedi, he needed expertise training, and Yoda knew how to train that way. While Yoda had intended on having Anakin train with basic classes and students of all sorts, he realized in this moment that he would have to go back to the basics and train Anakin himself. While elsewhere, the four Jedi had already departed and met up with the Queen of Naboo. Anakin was a little saddened that he never had the opportunity to say goodbye to Padme, 
But this was the opportunity of his life, to be trained by the Grand Master of the Jedi Order. Anakin looked at Yoda and asked the Grand Master, Master Yoda, what will happen to my mother? Hmm? She's still a slave. I don't want her to suffer anymore. Master Qui-Gon never freed her. Send a master to have her freed, I will. Go, we must. Where are we going, Master? To Aktu, homeworld of the Jedi. Your training begin there, it will. Anakin smiled weakly under his tired eyes. Hearing that his mother would be freed was an obvious relief to him. Though the stress of traveling with the Jedi to another place in the galaxy was very obviously distressing to him. Yoda walked further and further into the temple with his cane in hand, Anakin keeping close to his new master. Yoda then stopped and looked up at a towering Jedi Master. He spoke with him quietly as he requested that Jedi Master Plo Koon go to Tatooine and free as many slaves as he could, most in particular the one named Shmi Skywalker. Yoda wanted to ensure that if the Jedi were to operate in the Outer Rim, they would need to do good for all of the people, not just one. Plo more than anyone knew, this would be a long and hardy task for him, and requested to bring another Jedi Master with him. Yoda agreed, and so, Master Plo would go to Tatooine not long after with Jedi Master Yaddle to help free the slaves from the Outer Rim territories. Yoda and Anakin would continue down to the Jedi Hangar Bay without saying much. Yoda was a bit distraught, actually. For the first time in many years, he had a lot of worry at his heart, and while he concealed it from his new student, Yoda knew that this would be the most tantalizing challenge he would ever face as a teacher. He taught hundreds, if not thousands of Jedi. Yoda was one of the most pronounced teachers in the Order. Yoda's mind was thought-provoked as the two entered the Jedi shuttle, and Yoda had an astromech take the shuttle off into the air and fly into the space surrounding Coruscant, and within an instant the ship was in hyperspace, heading towards a long-lost planet of the Jedi, completely isolated from the Jedi Temple and everything else in the galaxy. Yoda knew he needed to have Anakin one-on-one. -on -one. They both needed to understand one another, and understand each other's perspectives on the galaxy around them. As the ship ran through hyperspace, Yoda sat down in the bridge of the shuttle, both on the floor. Yoda wanted Anakin to concentrate without distractions. The first test was seeing if Anakin would be able to handle an undertaking as such. It was relatively easy, being in space, surrounded by no one else and nothing else. Nothing but the sound of the hyperdrive humming through space, and every so often the astromech R-372 moving about the cabin. Anakin was able to concentrate though. Most of the time he had no issues with concentration, and this was no exception. He was able to concentrate in his slave labor, while Wado bombarded him with insults and slurs. Anakin was here in this moment, and he needed to focus on it. But the past continuously resurged in his mind as he tried to remain in the present. Yoda could feel it but he didn't want to interject. He wanted to see what Anakin would do. In other words, Yoda was most concerned about Anakin's determination and will to succeed in this task. It was part of Yoda's getting used to knowing his student. Yoda was very focused on all of Anakin's tiny little emotions that he showed, picking up on every single one of them as they each passed through the young mind of Anakin. Yoda felt the rage seethe and the peace take over. Yoda knew that Anakin could be the best Jedi the Order ever saw, but it would take patience. There was, of course, Jedi who teetered between the light and dark, and Windu was technically one of them, but Yoda was thinking of more along the lines of an ancient Jedi by the name of Revan. While decoding the secrets of Revan would require help from the archivist Jocasta Nu, Yoda would have to decipher the teachings of an ancient Jedi himself. While the journey in hyperspace dragged out for Anakin and Yoda, on the planet of Naboo, everything changed. Kyari Mundi and Ali Galia were traveling with Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi, in the hangar bay as the massive bay doors opened. The Jedi all looked at a hooded man as he removed his hood, realizing that there were four Jedi in the Queen's guard. Maul, realizing his mistake, knew that he couldn't back down from this fight. Sidious would kill him for doing so. And even worse, it would destroy his own interpretation of his culture. The culture of Adathomir Zabrak was that of a fighter. Even though they were completely dominated by the Knight Sisters, Maul would never be able to live with himself if he backed down from a fight. He had been preparing for this his entire life. He ignited his dual-bladed lightsaber and moved into attack position, as the four Jedi all ignited their weapons. And the Queen Guard broke off. 
Qui-Gon motioned his apprentice to go with the Queen and escort her to capture Newt Gunray. Obi-Wan was quick to listen, as the three Jedi Masters led by Kiata Mundi and Ali Galia moved into attack position. Qui-Gon followed up behind as their lightsabers illuminated the hall, as Obi-Wan on the other side of the hangar led the Queen and her guard against two destroyer droids before they made their way into a massive hallway that led into the building. Mundi and Galia engaged with Maul as they both moved swiftly and powerfully. It was very obvious that if this was an apprentice, he had been trained very well in the ways of the dark side of the Force. If he was the master, then the Sith would certainly perish with him. As Maul moved swiftly, like a proud warrior that he was, Qui-Gon moved in and attacked the Sith assassin. Obi-Wan made a push for the other side of the hangar bay, as he began getting closer and closer to the destroyer droids. Eventually, Obi-Wan and the guard were able to defeat the droids and push their way in for the throne room, so that they may capture Newt Gunray and end this invasion of Naboo. Inside of the hangar bay, the battle raged on. The three Jedi were all experienced duelists, but Maul's acrobatics and incredible speed made him a tough target to pin down. While the Jedi were trying to eradicate the Sith, they weren't trying to kill him. They wanted to give him a chance of redemption, but as the battle prolonged, it became even more apparent that that was not what Maul wanted to do. Maul very obviously was willing to die for his cause. The Jedi surrounded him and their conflict intensified as Maul backed into his own territory where he would be able to use his acrobatics to throw the Jedi off as he fought with them continuously. While their duel was extremely one-sided, it would end with that one-sided nature, as Kyarimundi took advantage and cut down Darth Maul without giving him a chance. On the other side of the galaxy, the shuttle landed on the mountains of an island. The planet of Octu was full of water, with scattered islands everywhere. The island of Octu had caretakers scattered across it, they used to serve the Jedi, and they still maintain the island to ensure that it remained inhabitable in case the Jedi ever returned. The Jedi had a large hollow tree with ancient texts, and at the top of the temple there was a large rock that allowed for one to meditate in front of the entire world. This was a place Yoda traveled to in his early days of training, and he knew it would be a great place for Anakin to be at. As the two Jedi began to make their way up to the former village of the Jedi, they had to hike many steps. Anakin wasn't one for complaining, and Yoda took note of that. He knew Anakin was a good kid, but the fire within him was something else, and something very concerning. The two made their way to the top of the island as they began to start their training. Yoda knew that the best concentration for Anakin would be testing himself physically and mentally. Considering Anakin had to learn the ways of the Force, it still would be better for him to take on the Force from a perspective that he would understand best. Yoda walked to the edge of the rock formation and stood effortlessly as he let Anakin watch him. Yoda then turned around and looked back into Anakin's eyes, saying, Learn, balance your will. Trust the Force. You must. How can I do that, Master? Trust me to teach you, and a powerful Jedi you will become. Now, stand here, you will. Let the force flow through you. A vessel of it you must become. Anakin would step forward and feel the lack of balance in his footing as he stood on the edge of the rock formation. Anakin closed his eyes like he did in the garden of the Jedi Temple, and within moments, he felt solidified in himself. The ground and drop before him was just an illusion. The force was all-powerful, and through him, the force would flow like nothing else. Anakin was born of the Force, and was given the opportunity to find exclusivity within the Force and attain a truer power than anything the galaxy had ever seen. Yoda watched as the scared boy within moments became confident. It wasn't anything that Yoda did, but it was the fact that Anakin trusted himself and the Force to guide him. It was here and now that Yoda knew he would be able to guide Anakin to become the greatest Jedi the Order had ever seen. Though all of Anakin's training would be complete on Ahch 2, it wasn't to separate Anakin from anyone else, but it was to allow Anakin to thrive in his training with the most powerful Jedi in the Order. Elsewhere in the galaxy, Plo Koon and Yaddle entered Satooine, as they tried to find Shmi Skywalker. She was their first priority. Of course, they would find and free the other slaves, but they wanted to free Shmi so that they could contact Master Yoda and inform him that Skywalker's mother had been no longer been a slave. Further from Octu on the planet of Naboo, the Jedi were cleaning up the mess of the battle. 
While the Trade Federation warship was not destroyed and the Gungans were all executed in battle, the people of Naboo were able to rally the Republic against the Trade Federation. Tensions would grow, but the Jedi having been present would have to address the Senate, and the fact that the Sith had returned. The issue, though, was that the Senate was currently being run by the last alive Sith Lord. With Plagueis killed in his sleep and Maul dead on Naboo, the Sith were pretty much all but extinct. While Yoda wasn't around to consult the Jedi in their actions, he left the hands of the galaxy and the decisions of the Jedi Order in the hands of the Master of the Order, Mace Windu. Yoda trusted Mace's judgment, and since Mace wanted to separate the Jedi from the Senate, it's exactly what he did. This along with the fact that Qui-Gon Jinn didn't die during the invasion of Naboo, meant that Master Dooku would never find a reason to leave the Order. The Order felt unified, and while Yoda and Anakin were off-world, they were building a bond. Not just with, with each other, but with the Force itself. Anakin would grow tight with his new master, as the two of them began their journey as master and apprentice. The first few months would be slow, after Anakin's initial reaction to the Force itself. Anakin would have a lot to learn, and Yoda made sure he took his time, but he wanted to make sure that Anakin got every little bit of detail he could take in. The best part about Yoda training Anakin is that the boy felt listened to. The compassion of Grandmaster Yoda was quiet but genuine. Anakin appreciated his master and apprentice bond with his master, but there was also a very specific lesson that Yoda wanted Anakin to learn, and it was trusting what the Force had to tell him. Yoda had known about Anakin's mom being freed from slavery, but he wanted to see how Anakin's attachments and the Force would work together. Yoda could feel how Shmi was also doing through Anakin's relationship with his mother. Yoda knew that Shmi was doing well and living happily, and while it wasn't the Jedi way to have emotions, Yoda was able to realize through Anakin's training that using it, to an extent, would be helpful for Anakin's development. Yoda understood that Anakin would develop well if he were able to use his natural ability to refine his talents. Yoda himself didn't really agree with the idea entirely. He wanted his student to succeed, but regardless, Yoda had a proactive focus on meditation, and it took time. Anakin would get a little upset and a little unmotivated as Anakin sat in attempt to meditate. Yoda then spoke to his student. Let go of your tension, my apprentice. Let go. Trust yourself. You must. I'm trying, master, but it's hard. I feel like I'm being blocked. What by? My thoughts feel out of control. When I stood on the rock, I felt balanced, but I feel crowded with rampant thoughts, master. Hmm, yes. Focused on your failures, you are. Remember, Anakin, failure, the greatest teacher, is triumph, success. Power for allies, yes, hmm? But failure, a teacher it is. Guide you, it will. Learn from it, you must. Controlled by it, you must not become. Again. Hey, master, I'll try my best. No, my apprentice, do or do not. There is no try. Anakin looked at his master with a glimmer of astonishment in his eyes. Yoda was incredibly wise, though it would have been ironic if he wasn't after being alive for more than 800 years. Anakin listened to his master as he let all of his failures slip his mind and trusted his ability in the Force as he became entitled to the success he deserved. And immediately, Anakin was transported off-world as he went to a planet nearby in the Outer Rim, down to the sands of Tatooine and into the city of Mos Espa. It was Shmi, and she was smiling. She was a free woman. Anakin was thrown from his meditation as he woke up and smiled with tears coming down his eyes as Yoda jumped over to see if his apprentice was alright and make sure he was okay. It wasn't a thoughtful reaction, but an instinctual reaction. Anakin looked up at his master and smiled without saying a word. Anakin and Yoda's bond as master and apprentice was solidified. Anakin and Yoda would continue their training, focusing on all aspects of the Force and exploring every new single detail they could find and explore together. While Yoda had an extensive knowledge over most of the Force itself, he needed to learn with Anakin. The greatest teacher failure may be, but the best teacher learned from their student, and Yoda was taking in how great and important it was for a Jedi to have themselves attached in their emotions. Yoda saw how volatile Anakin could become, and it was evident that sometimes it was in the training, 
But Yoda also saw that Anakin had the potential for the impossible, to become incredibly powerful and knowledgeable and with the prowess within the Force. Part of this training with Anakin made Yoda realize that maybe the code in all of those old books were a bit flawed. So one night, Anakin was sleeping. Yoda decided to slowly make his way up to the top of the hill and walk into the hollowed out tree. Yoda looked at the book texts and spoke to himself aloud. How wrong I was. These texts, too old they are. Trust in the force, the Jedi must. As he leaned against the wood of the thick tree, Yoda thought back to the order that he led and thought about all the teachers who may have been failing the order and all the teachers who were doing right for the Jedi. The night would dissipate into day as Yoda, within his heart, realized that there was much that needed to be changed. But how could it be done? He was away from his order and it would be years before he returns with Skywalker. Yoda opened his eyes to the dawn for a new day, and he sauntered his way down to the mountain and got into the communication device where he got into contact with the Jedi Council and spoke to the Mass of the Order alone. A mistake. We have made the code. Wrong it is. What do you mean, Master? Training Skywalker taught me a lesson it has. How did the boy teach you a lesson? Trust our feelings we must. The Force grows within us, flows through our bond, not just with it, but others too. Hmm? Do you believe this is true? Believe not. No, I do. How should I address the Order in your absence? Talk with Dooku, you must. Trust each other, and the Force, you must. Yes, Master. May the Force be with you. And with you. Yoda watched as a hologram vanished into nothing. He looked up and saw Anakin walking up the hill with eagerness following him as he continued walking. Yoda smiled pleasantly as the wind blew through his thin white hair. Yoda was ready to teach Anakin another new day of excitement. While Yoda had vowed time and time again to never train a student or another student, he always fell in love with teaching a student time after time. Yoda and Anakin would begin their training. Inside of the Jedi Temple, Obi-Wan had become a knight, and he was enjoying the life of a Jedi Knight, though Qui-Gon expressed some difficulties with not being able to train Anakin. He was content with the fact that the Jedi Master Yoda was taking a hold of the situation and training the Jedi's Chosen One, however, by not being arrogant. The next several months would consist of Yoda and Anakin understanding each other and growing their bond with one another. Yoda also was informed of a secret that Anakin had been harboring, and it was an attachment to Padme Amidala. Of course, he was afraid of telling Yoda, because he was afraid that Yoda might be upset, but Yoda just wanted to know why. Anakin was unable to express to Yoda what it was to become of her warmth and her compassion during their journey from Tat to into Coruscant. He didn't need to understand much, all of this was so very new to him, and he was just trying his best, but... Anakin tried to express everything he could so that Yoda could understand. Yoda made Anakin aware that it was okay. Anakin was prideful in fact that Yoda tried to understand him as best as he could. The Jedi on Coruscant were trying their best to conform the council and with Dooku and Windu had an archivist go through all the databanks looking for information regarding the code and its several forms trying to be the healthiest balance between the code and emotionality that Yoda had referenced. At the same time, Plo Koon and Yaddle had freed most of the slaves in the Outer Rim. The Republic with Palpatine's reluctance was moving into the Outer Rim to end slavery. Though the Senate took great notice of Palpatine's reluctance to go into the Outer Rim to free the slaves. The way he dragged his feet didn't sit well with a lot of senators, especially the new senator of Naboo, Padme Amidala. Months turned to years as Anakin grew from a little boy into a grown man. He was able to build himself his first lightsaber, and under the training of Yoda, he was able to adopt the blade similar to that of the Master of the Order, Amethyst, a blade lit from Anakin's hilt, and the training he had with Yoda made him extremely proficient of a duelist. Next to Plo Koon, Anakin was the only Jedi to ever beat Yoda in a sparring contest at the rightful age of 16. 
though Anakin at this point was 18. Anakin was physically built. He focused on his strength consistently, he was connected well with the Force, and his body reciprocated that strength. Anakin moved like a ghost and struck like a rancor. Yoda and Anakin were as tight as could be. A few times a Jedi Master or two would show up on Act 2 to see Anakin's progression in his training. Though they were never long visits, sometimes Dooku or Windu would be the ones that visited. On the other hand, the Jedi Council was changing the order around to fit what Yoda was proposing. Simultaneously, Chancellor Palpatine was removed from power. He didn't lose in a vote of no confidence, rather he lost in a general election. He became unpopular in hindsight because of the Jedi and their ability to fix issues that the Republic should have fixed. While the Senate was certainly corrupt, the fact that two Jedi could do more for slavery than the entire Galactic Republic told the Senate that there was a need for change at the helm. There was a new Chancellor in power, and Palpatine disappeared from the political game, especially with Padme Amidala as a Senator of Naboo already. On Act 2, Master and Apprentice were moving together as one. Yoda was on Anakin's back, inside of a small backpack. Anakin ran through fields and down the mountain, jumping from rock to rock with elegant balance. He was fully one with himself as he moved delicately, no missteps, and even more he was guided by the forest itself. Anakin ran past some porgs and then sprinted up a hill as he pulled his lightsaber from the wall and did a front flip as Yoda fell out of the backpack, igniting his blade. Anakin turned around and ignited his blade as he swung at the Grand Master. Yoda blocked and then bounced off the wall as Anakin moved back and forth defending himself with Form 3. As he transitioned quickly into Form 5 to match Yoda as he moved into an offensive form. Anakin was on the tips of his feet as he tried to beat back his Jedi Master. Yoda leaped forward and cut Anakin's Padawan braid from his head as he landed behind him and grinned. Yoda sheathed his blade as Anakin turned around and saw that his master was standing behind him pleasantly, holding something behind his back in his hands or something. Anakin spoke up. Is everything all right, master? Hmm? Your master, I no longer am. A knight you are. You mean? Yes, young Skywalker. A Jedi knight you have become. Anakin's smile rang from cheek to cheek as he bowed to his master a true form of respect between master and apprentice. Anakin felt so warm in his heart, he felt truly complete and truly accomplished. He was a Jedi Knight, and he did so astonishingly fast, as he wiped the sweat from his brow and looked across the skyline to see the sun set over the water. He looked back at his master. Yes, young Skywalker, visit your mother, we will. Show her your accomplishments, you shall. Anakin wiped a tear from his eye. This was the moment Qui-Gon promised nine years beforehand. This pride, this fondness, this moment was everything he worked so hard for. Anakin was a Jedi in this moment, truly. He stayed dedicated to his work and his studies, and he was now fully accomplished. Of course, there was more for Anakin to achieve, but this was more than enough for him. But the fact that Yoda would take Anakin to see his mother after all this time was even more relieving to him. Anakin and Yoda walked down side by side to the bottom of the island where the ship had been parked for nine years. Anakin and Yoda talked with one another and both laughed about the times and memories they shared on the island with one another. The journey was extensive and great. As they got to the ship, they powered it up, and the dust in the engines throughout the air filters was blown out of the side as a porg nest caught on fire that was stuck inside of the ship. R-372 turned on immediately and wheeled over to the fire and extinguished it, burning the porgs too. He was essentially offline for the last nine years. He was excited with this match and he was excited to see Anakin's joy, and Anakin was excited to see the little droid. Yoda smiled as he plopped up onto his seat and waited for Anakin and R-3 to end their excitement. The two of them enjoyed seeing one another. As they ended their little meeting, the ship pulled up into the atmosphere and the little droid set the coordinates for Tatooine. The trip through hyperspace was bittersweet. Of course, both Anakin and Yoda knew this day would come, but they both individually had their own feelings towards the day and never really wanted it to come. They both wanted to enjoy their magnificent bond for the longest time. It was a very parental bond, with the added effect of a grand teacher and the grandest student. The two matched up evenly and their bond was unlike anything ever seen before. 
Their ship traveled to hyperspace and traveled and arrived outside of Tatooine within hours. Anakin and Yoda made their landing procedure as they looked across the city for Shmi Skywalker. Anakin used the force to guide himself to his mother as he found her and wrapped his arms around her. Shmi was so excited to see her son back and her son was equally excited to see her. Anakin introduced her to Grand Master Yoda, who was happy as ever to meet Shmi. Yoda had a gift for him the mother of Skywalker, as he used the force to lift up the Padawan braid from Anakin to her. Shmi grabbed it in the air and held it as she looked at it. The two Jedi explained that the braid being cut from someone's head was a sign of transfer from student to knight. Shmi understood that it meant that Anakin was an accomplished Jedi, and that he had passed the Jedi trials. While it was evident that both Jedi had plenty of time to do this, both Yoda and Anakin felt a draw to leave and head for hyperspace quickly. So, without an elongated stay, both Anakin and Yoda left Mos Espa and returned to space. As their ship left the atmosphere and prepared to jump into hyperspace, the ship was stopped. Both Anakin and Yoda looked around trying to find what it was that ended up stopping them. They both saw a large floating object, and then they were blinded by a bright light. Anakin and Yoda woke up after an unidentified time. Yoda was awake first as he woke up his student. They both looked at each other as they looked across the shuttle to see the ramp opened in the back. It seemed as if someone had opened it up for them or snuck into the ship. Anakin walked down the ramp, focused on what may be around the corner. Everything felt weird. He knew and looked out, and then he looked back to his master, who trailed behind him with his eyes closed as he stopped next to his former apprentice. What is it, master? Not sure am I, surrounded by the force we are. I know, it's incredibly strong. Moments later, a translucent woman approached the Jedi Master and Apprentice duo. As Anakin looked over and looked at her with an odd look across his face, Yoda stepped around Anakin to see the person he was looking at, and he was very confused. The woman asked him to follow. Anakin and Yoda looked at each other as they stepped forward and followed the woman. As they walked down the trail, they tried to ask questions but were left with no answers or more questions. All of a sudden, the rocks from above began to topple down. Yoda used the force to throw Anakin out of the way from the rocks. Anakin looked over as the dust began to settle as he called out to Yoda. Master, are you alright? Yes, follow her. You must stay. I will. Yes, Master. Anakin sighed as he followed the woman throughout the day. Yoda on the other side sauntered his way back to the ship and tried to set up a small camp for himself with a fire and some food to eat. On the other hand, as the day turned to dusk, Anakin would find himself climbing the steps into a massive castle. Inside of the castle, he saw an old man at the end of a massive corridor. The old man looks at Anakin and spoke to him in a deep voice. He told Anakin that he was becoming too old and he needed someone to talk in the mantle, to hold it if you will. The father asked Anakin if he could be the balance of the force on Mortis. Anakin spoke up and asked, I can restore the balance, but what about the galaxy? The Sith are still out there, we need to stop them. The father smiled as he told Anakin that there was no issue with restoring the balance when it came to the Sith. The Ones were an ancient power in the galaxy, and keeping the balance here meant keeping the balance in the Force, though the sacrifice would be never being able to leave Mortis. Anakin would dedicate himself to the Force. Anakin smiled momentarily, and then thought for a moment. The father nodded at Anakin and told him to consult his master about how he felt about this. The father also told Anakin to be wary of his son, who was known to frequent the night and terrorize the weak. Anakin nodded as he got up and started for the door. Anakin as he walked out the door and was thrown from his feet by a flying demon of sorts. Yoda on the other side of Mortis was sleeping next to a campfire. He was awoken by his own voice. He opened his weary eyes and he saw himself looking at him. Yoda spoke in riddles about Naboo. Of course, Yoda had no reason to know why, and then the apparition said, where it began is where it ends. Of course, Yoda couldn't know what that meant, but Yoda assumed he needed to travel to the planet of Naboo. As Yoda walked around the corner, he felt the presence and peace and balance. The force felt smooth, 
and then he realized that it was all part of the same dream. And as the word Nebu echoed into his ears, the peace was silenced by a cold force. Yoda looked around and saw that there was nothing. He was confused, and when he turned back to go back to sleep, he saw his apprentice and a massive castle in front of him. Anakin rolled and stood up as the sun flew down towards him. Anakin reached up and grabbed the being out of the air with the force and threw the sun towards the ground and held him down. Anakin looked at the sun with pure power in his chest and confidence in his shoulders. Anakin turned to see his master as Yoda stood up. Anakin told Master Yoda about what the father had said to him. The chance to be around the living force was a bit scary. Anakin didn't want to say goodbye to his master. He adored him, and their journey had just begun. Even more, Anakin was worried about how he would learn or even continue to learn. But Yoda always had the right things to say at the right time. Trust the force. You must. Your teacher it is now. But master, I'm afraid of failing you. Failed me? You have not been the greatest teacher you have. Master? Hmm? Yes. Taught me balance you have. To trust the force and emotions, yes, yes. Repay this gift, I cannot. Yoda smiled at Anakin as a tear welted in his eye. He looked down at Yoda as the Jedi Grand Master smiled softly. The gentility and the care of the Grand Master had prepared Anakin for this moment. Everything was working towards everything he could truly accomplish could be done here, now. The father stood at the top of the stairs he looked at Anakin who turned around and nodded at the father. The father looked forward as Anakin turned around. Yoda was lifted, and then, with the flash of a bright light, Yoda was aboard his ship, alone. R3 was still there, but his apprentice was gone, lost in time on a world he would never be able to find again. Yoda had a lot of loss in 800 years of life, and while it was always painful letting go, nothing hurt more than saying goodbye to his final apprentice. Yoda then looked at R3 and requested that they go to Naboo. Whatever the vision he had of Naboo had to do with this, he was going there to see for himself. On Mortis, Anakin walked up the steps as he wiped a single tear away from his face. He looked at the father who told him that he was now going to bring balance in the force, and now we would learn how to keep up with that balance. Anakin nodded without saying a word. His thoughts may have just been on his master still, but it was time to focus on what was his really destiny, bringing balance to the Force. Simultaneously, Yoda arrived out of hyperspace over Naboo. After a couple hours in hyperspace, the ship is taken down to the main hangar bay in the planet's capital city, Theed. Yoda exited the ship and followed the Force. The vision on Mortis, everything felt the same. Yoda felt the coldness and traveled as he followed the, the crooked feeling. The dark side of the Force was here. Where it started, it wasn't the beginning of the Sith. It was the beginning of the end of the Sith. The first Sith killed in centuries died on Naboo. And now, Yoda turned a corner and saw a hooded man and realized that the last Sith had to die on Naboo. The Sith you are! Master Yoda, I thought you were dead. Dead? No. Alive more than ever. Yes. Foolish Jedi. You shall die then. Yoda ignited his lightsaber as Sidious ignited two blades to confront the Jedi Grand Master. Sidious was on a losing streak, with no apprentice to his name and a completely failed political career, he was an outcast for losing a re-election. Sidious threw himself forward as Yoda met the power of the dark side and reciprocated the power of balance. Yoda and Anakin over the years played off of one another, and from that they grew exceptionally in their strength as force users. Yoda and Sidious, this heated exchange continued throughout the hallways as walls were cut into pieces. Yoda and Sidious moved back and forth elegantly as their blades lit up hallways, both light and dark. The two of them were brilliantly matched, but as Yoda lost his balance and remembered his apprentice, Sidious struck the upper hand as the two blades collided against Yoda's. As the Jedi Grandmaster twisted his body around and leapt off the wall, No. No. Not like this. Restore the balance, I must. For my final apprentice, I will. And with his blade poised for victory, he landed the final blow. Yoda trusting in balance that he and his student discovered together, killed the Sith Lord, and restored the balance in the galaxy. 
Yoda stood near the edge of a massive plasma pit and lifted up the body of the deceased Sith Lord and hovered him over the massive chasm and dropped the body of the deceased Sith Lord into it, lifeless as the body of Sidious fell without stopping. Yoda looked around as he placed his blade on his belt. The forest felt smooth and peaceful, just like the dream. The balance was clearly restored, but it was not of Yoda, but of Anakin's sacrifice. The life of a slave became a servant of the Force, a being of higher and elite power. He may not have been present physically, but his actions influenced the Force and allowed for the outcome to be present. Yoda, over the course of the next several hours, would make his way back to Coruscant, and after nine years of not being in the city, he saw the development and growth of the capital. But even more of that, he saw the changes of the council. He walked into the council chambers and stood before the entire council. Everyone was happy to see him, especially his former student, Dooku. The council was curious about everything Yoda had learned and wished to understand everything he wanted to do with the Order and the Direction. Yoda spoke about his experience with Skywalker. All the copious amounts of training, all the memories, good and bad, Yoda reflected on it all, and then he told the council about Naboo and the beginning of the Sith and the end of the Sith, happening on that planet, and it was done. There was balance in the Force, and the Jedi had to enact on it. The Master of the Order then spoke up. So what happened to Skywalker? Oh, balance in the Force, he did. A lesson for us all to learn. Yes. Yes. How do you mean, Master? Anak too. When I trained Skywalker, learn from him, I did. Balance, not polite, hmm? Trust in the Force, we must. Strive for balance, we will. So you're saying we change our ways? Be better, we must. Change for the galaxy. Change for the people. Change for Skywalker. We will. And that is our story, ladies and gentlemen. Again, special thanks to George Stewart, Benjamin Wells, Jay Hoff, and Warpig and 308, Icy Raptor, Gort, and Chainsaw Lauren Sanders for supporting the channel. Let's hit 2,000 likes on this so that we can see what if Qui-Gon talked to Darth Vader. If you want to see what if, let me know down below. If you want to comment, let me do two crossovers, and check out the Twitch, Discord, and Patreon if you want to support the channel or be a part of the community in other ways. And if you want to learn how to win a free sideshow collectible, this has to be done by July 31st at 11.59 p.m. We have to hit 35,000 subscribers. I believe we can do it. It's right around the corner. We're literally like 6,000 away from doing it. We can hit it in the next nine days. I believe in all of you, and I believe in the drive to hit that goal. If you guys hit that goal, I will give away one of these sideshow collectibles to one of you, and that will be the giveaway. Go down below, there's a pinned comment. You click on the pinned comment, you write your name down below. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's talk about our story here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we talk about the story, though, special thanks to all of our voice actors. They all did a fantastic job. Uh, thank you all for the hard work that you guys put into helping this channel grow. And so the story itself, um, I'm very proud of. I like this story a lot, and right now um, I'm, I'm sitting on the other side of having written it, and I, I'm very proud of how it turned out. While it's not one of the longer stories, it sits in a nice, nice, nice time, and I think the story itself has a very nice emotional drawing to it, right? This story is meant to be different than the others. Obviously, this is Master Yoda. This is the Grand Master of the Order. And it's always hard for these stories because we have so many what if somebody trained Anakin videos that it's always hard to try and find a new way to tell the story. And the one difference that I can make here is that because Master Yoda is the Grand Master of the Order, he has the opportunity to do literally whatever he wants. And if he wants to say in front of the entire council that he wants to train Anakin, then so be it. And that's what I decided would work here. Instead of trying to do a whole elaborate process of doing da 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 da, I wanted this to be very straightforward and to the point. Yoda wants to train Anakin because he believes that he can do it the best, and he wants to. And in the end, Yoda ends up being what every teacher should be, whether it's in your own personal life or in the movies. Every teacher should be able to learn from their student. And I do believe that wholeheartedly, and that's why this is such an um, important theme in the story, is that teachers can be taught too. Teachers are humans, and even though this is a story about Yoda, a little green life form from who knows where in the galaxy, he is, just as everybody else is, imperfect. Everyone is imperfect, and that's what the story's thematic device is, is that everyone's imperfect and that everyone can learn from the other. No matter how old you are or how young you are, you can still learn. And while the balance of the Jedi and the Force itself is always going to be important in the idea and the story and the frame of Star Wars, 
the importance of this story and the importance of Yoda training Anakin is that Yoda ends up learning just as much as Anakin learns. And while there isn't a lot of focus on the detail throughout the training, as I feel like we've done enough of that focus detail throughout our time together, I believe that the story for Anakin and Yoda is one of almost father and son, almost, in a way. And though there's a huge age difference between the two of them, Yoda, in a way, would adopt Anakin as his own. I think being on Ahch 2, first of all, would be a great place for him to separate, and I really don't care if you guys have an issue with Ahch 2 being in the story. It's a great planet, and I think it's a great opportunity to take advantage of an established canon. I think that going to Ahch 2, being alone on this island that's run by caretakers, surrounded by porgs that are essentially suicidal, and just having the opportunity to be at the birthplace of the Jedi Order, I think would be the perfect opportunity for both Yoda and Anakin to undergo serious changes. I think Yoda in the first couple months would realize that there was more to the Force and more to the Jedi and more to the way of just being existent in the world and the galaxy than the Jedi Code. And I think at that certain point he would realize it by scrolling through the texts, trying to prepare his next lesson for a student, and realizing that this was not how he should train Anakin. And I think that was very well uh, done here if I don't say so myself. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that Anakin would have capitalized extremely uh, off, of, off of being Yoda's student, I think. I think there's no doubt that Anakin would have absolutely been superb in this. And at the end of this, I wanted to do something different. Always, we always have Anakin kill Sidious, and da -da -da -da. I don't really care. I, I didn't want to do that here. I kind of threw together two what-ifs that people have been asking for, and obviously I intend on doing the other one. But because of this opportunity, I decided to be interested and take everyone to Mortis and have Anakin and Yoda separate naturally instead of just, you know, one of them dying or the other one not dying or whatnot. I think Anakin becoming more than what a Jedi or a Sith or anyone in the Living Force could become, I think Anakin would become one of the Ones and become the father essentially of the Ones, the Chosen One, the one that holds the balance together in the galaxy, sacrificing himself for the greater good. And I think that little moment there for Anakin and Yoda to share before Anakin says goodbye to his master and Yoda says goodbye to his apprentice, his final apprentice, is one of the most pure moments in any of the stories that I've told so far. And while I feel like I'm kind of over talking a little bit, I always like to give as much detail as I can about why I made creative decisions in these stories, especially when I'm the one that wrote them. Uh, otherwise though, I hope you all enjoyed the story. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe. It does help with the channel a lot. Regardless of all that though, I love you all. Spread the love. And always remember my friends, may the force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.